Hi, this is Kristina Sobojna. Welcome to my YouTube channel about investments. The purpose of this channel is to help you make smarter investment decisions. Today I have a special guest, John Stein, founder and CEO of Betterment. Betterment is a robo-advisor that helps people to invest. It makes the process simple. And today we will not be talking about investments like in the previous video. Today we will be talking about the founding story of John, how he started a startup, uh, how he raised his first funds because it, it was in 2008 financial crisis. It's similar to the situation we're having right now. I hope that founders raising funds out there right now uh, will find this information helpful for their fundraising purposes. And we will get a bit personal with John. We will talk about his life lessons, how he overcomes adversity, and what inspires him. Why does he wake up energetically every day? Hi, John. Very nice to meet you. Hi, Christina. Nice Great to see to you. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Good to see you again. Um, okay, let's start from your story. Um, so after graduation, you worked for a couple of years in the industry, you were investing. How did you come up with the idea and how everything started? Oh, that's a lot of questions. Um, to <laughs> distinctly um, how everything started like how i got the idea um i guess a a place to start is um just my my background in economics and and psychology and uh interest in the intersection of those two fields or behavioral economics i i i saw in in college through those classes and through those two lenses that good decisions when it comes to your money are super valuable, right? Like saving early, you know, consistency. Um, and yet I saw on the behavioral side that good decisions are hard to come by because we often get in our own way, we do the wrong thing, we're short-sighted, we're uh, impulse-driven rather than strategic. And I thought, how interesting, how do I help people make better decisions and like sort of make the most of their money and make the most of their lives and realize their potential and their dreams? And coming out of college, no one was recruiting anyone to do that. Um, that wasn't a, a thing. Like they were coming to recruit for investment banking, and you know, um, and 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 you know, uh, selling 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 stocks. And it was just like none of it was like, how do we help people like live better and like realize their potential? So I thought for a while about being a doctor. <laughs> That's great. I went and did a post back pre med year. Um, and uh, and then uh, and I didn't like blood and I didn't like working in the labs. I, I, just, I wanted to have bigger impact um, than I felt I could in that. Uh, and so I moved to New York and I decided I needed to teach myself to work. And so I started working in consulting for big banks. And I, uh, you know, it was like an unlikely spot for me to end up given like, you know, my, my, um, my drive to help people make the most of their money. But I, I did find like, I learned a ton uh, in working for the, the big banks and, and brokers. I saw that the big uh, institutions weren't really focused on helping their customers. They didn't think about how to help them make the most of their money. They thought instead about how to increase the bottom line and, and it didn't matter what they were doing to their, to their customers. Mm -hmm. Um, regulators were the only ones who seemed to like, you know, really like um, be thinking about the customers. And a core belief for Betterment has always been this values based approach of always doing what's right for the customer and believing that in the long term, we'll build a more compelling business because customers will come to know that we've always put their best interests first and we'll build this sort of loyalty around a brand that um, does the right thing by its customers. But that's a hard thing. Um, it's, uh, you know, you need a lot of scale in this business. You got to grow. It takes a long time to grow. It takes a long time to build a, build a brand like that. Uh, and so we're, uh, you know, even though we're 10 years in now, um, since we launched uh, uh, back after the financial crisis of 2008, um, I still feel like we have a long way to go. So that's a short version of, of the story. But I'm just curious, did you come up with this idea in the beginning or you kind of pivoted along the way? 
I knew that we were going to be making things better in financial services. Um, I mm -hmm. knew that we were going to, um, to, to help people make better financial decisions. I wasn't sure early on if we'd be a bank or a mutual fund company or a broker. And I settled on an advisor um, ultimately because I knew that the, the kind of relationship I wanted to have with our customers was always reminding them of the right thing to do with their money, always making a recommendation, not just saying you figure mm -hmm. it out, but like, you know, we'll take the liability as a fiduciary, like it's on us. Like we think this is the right thing for you to do and taking on that responsibility to make recommendations just felt like the right, the right thing. It also felt, feels like to me today to be the smart long-term uh, competitive position. Right. If I think about um, where the market is, there's a lot of product manufacturers who are making this fund or you know this 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 type of account, um, but making sense of it all and being the brain that helps to like help you optimize every transaction and optimize your saving and and make the most of it. Um, that is what can be you know built through smart automation and technology and like through tax loss harvesting and tax coordinated portfolios and automated rebalancing and dividend reinvestment and all the like smart algorithms that we have that are always working for our customers. That kind of technology I think is the, the future of, uh, of financial services broadly. And so being this advisor is a smart place to be. Gotcha. So the idea of the, the goal was clear from the beginning and uh, were you alone? Did you have a couple of friends? And um, yeah, were you alone? That's the question. I was, I, I was always alone. Uh, it, it, everyone's alone in the beginning, I guess. But yeah, I was um, uh, fortunately um, in the context of uh, you know, uh, New York City, a dynamic place where I had lots of friends who were doing interesting things. And I was just constantly talking to them about um, these ideas. Um, I went to business school uh, for a couple of years and I was developing my business plan there. Talked to one of my um, good friends who was a securities lawyer, and he, he joined me to uh, to help build out the platform. I talked to one of my former consulting partners, and he knew somebody who had uh, started a broker broker dealer. And I talked to him about uh, putting together, you know, like the back end that we needed. My roommate was uh, a, an engineer uh, at Google, and so like he sort of helped me to like learn to code. I ended up coding the front end myself. Um, but oh, he wow. put up the, he sort of set up the initial database. He like he taught me everything the back end. I knew at the time. He cut he he coded up the whole back end, uh, and then um, you know back then um, we all did everything. I did everything. Like everyone who was in the office was answering customer phone calls. Everyone was um, you know could could get in could jump in and pinch hit and manage you know the the trading blotter if they needed to. Back when there were only four or five of us when when we launched. Um, today, there's a lot more specialization. We have like people who have everything and who've done everything for years and years and like know it better than I ever did. Um, uh, but uh, so yeah, so so you're you're alone and but you can never do anything alone for for very long. So uh, reaching out to people, talking through your ideas and kind of um, maybe even uh, changing your ideas a bit and getting inspired by other people, experts and reaching out to your friends. That that's great, um, but then you need money, right, to build your 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 first product. So, did you bootstrap uh, Betterment, or did you get your first funding? For a while, we bootstrapped it. I was fortunate to have been a consultant, um, you know, for several years, um, and uh, and lived very thriftily. Um, if you know, uh -huh. you can imagine that you can live thriftily on uh, you know New York's Lower East Side. Yeah. You know, I wanted to ask. Like thousands you could, right? Like I ate a lot of <laughs> things and um, <laughs> deli sandwiches <laughs> and, um, and saved. Uh, and so I had some money to, to self-fund the company for a while, but um, you know, that wasn't going to get us to the, the scale that, that, that we wanted to be. And we launched at TechCrunch Disrupt. Um, and, uh, and in that, I saw an opportunity to kind of one, kickstart, you know, growth, right? To like get in front of a lot of customers, but also to kick off a fundraising process. Cause I thought, well, this is a good chance for us to get in front of a bunch of investors and people who watch, you know, these kinds of events to see like, what's the next hot thing. Uh, and what was fortunate was that we, you know, we prepared a lot for that 
uh, and then we luckily um, we 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 got into the finals. We won like the most disruptive company in New York, and so we were um, uh, we got a lot of attention out of it. Uh, we mm -hmm. like twenty thousand people were watching the finals on online, and maybe like two thousand in the room where it was held, and enough of them signed up. You know, crazy early adopters that like we got we got going. And based on that early traction, we started talking to investors. Now I was woefully underprepared in those early days um, for what it was to raise money. Um, uh, you know, I just, I felt like we didn't have our deck together. We didn't have like, you know, a story together of even how much we wanted to raise. Back then I was like, how about a million dollars? That's a big number. That's, that's more than I ever think we'll need, right? Like, but like a million dollars, imagine what we could do with that. Um, and, uh, and so I think sensing that a lot of people, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, weren't, weren't sure about Betterment early, early on. When we finally um, met our first investor though, um, which, was, uh, was, which was Bessemer Ventures, it was kind of like love at first pitch. We, we'd, we'd done a few of these, I wouldn't say any of them had gone particularly well, um, you know, we like, and then uh, we met uh, we met Bessemer and they said, oh, well, we've been like looking to find a company in this space that helps to answer the question, like, what should I do with my money for a long time? And we think you're the best we've seen. And I said, great. Uh, and I, <laughs> Finally. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, how, like we were looking for a million dollars and they said, well, how about three million? We think it's going to take a little more than that. And I was like, okay, you know, like um, <laughs> we can probably we can probably figure that out. Um, uh, and, uh, and so we were, we were lucky, um, you know, we've, we've been, uh, we've been lucky at every stage. Gotcha. So like, if we just run the numbers, how much did you invest yourself to just have that, um, rough number? Uh, and the first, uh, funding was 3 million. How much Let's you need say, to get to 3 million? I don't remember exactly, but under a million dollars that my friend yeah, and family had, had, had put in together with me, um, to kind of get us started and off the ground. Um, and then, yeah, our series A was, uh, was, was 3 million. And, uh, with friends and family also, uh, I'm curious, did you use like safe or convertible notes or it's just, you know, words? Um, oh, how did we, how did we structure it? Um, yes. a portion of it was, uh, was equity. Um, people had you know, ownership, uh, in the company. We, we sold them shares, um, and, uh, and a portion of it was, um, like senior subordinated debt um, that we used to cover things like we needed some like regulatory, you know, um, capital, we needed some, uh, you know, like there were just things that we had to like capitalize in, in the early days. And so like we, we used mm -hmm. that some of that. So some of the money you sold equity, a straight common or preferred stock? What, uh, what did you choose at the time, if you remember? It was just common before, just before, common. We, before we started taking venture money. It was just common. What would it, what advice would you give to yourself uh, at, if you come back to 2008? What mistakes you could have avoided or you would like to avoid? And the advice for the founders who are raising funds right now. Oh, I mean, I you know I feel like everyone has to kind of make their own mistakes and learn and learn. <laughs> That's how you learn. You know, you just have to do it. Um, you know, one of the funny Same. mistakes was like I definitely thought. At a time, I was just going to manage everything on, on my own. And one of the things I've learned time and time again is the importance of, uh, of hiring great people, right? And like bringing people on. But it's kind of easy to say that now, you know, like we're successful. It's like easy to bring people on, um, you know, who, who... You have money. Yeah, exactly. And you like in these days when it's just you pitching an idea, I can say that I can say it's important to bring on great people, but it's hard, you know, like you're, you're, you're pitching like a, a, a dream and, and maybe you don't have a track record yet. And um, so um, uh, it's, it's kind of sometimes easier to say these things. You just have to go out and do it and make, make it work. The, the advice I always give is, is just to, to make it, make it real as quickly as possible, right? Like give people something that they can like latch onto, you know, like silly things like, Hey, we've got, here's my business card or like, here's my, you know, company email address, like make it real, make it seem le legit, build the, build the version of the site, start showing that to people to get others excited in your vision and get them starting to join in. Cause it all comes down to people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to kind of put everything together, the idea, the website, the business card, 
tell the story, present the story, and get the people excited about uh, your company. Anything else? Like, would you first approach your friends, or you would make a job po job posting and like interview people? Um, when I was first recruiting people, it was definitely yeah. through my friends and network because gotcha. um, it's so much more efficient. You know, today it's um, you know obviously it's a little bit of that, but it's much more heavily job postings and recruiting and outreach. And, uh, you know, we're, we, we're constantly seeking to um, increase diversity and inclusiveness and in, like the folks that we're hiring and making sure that we're like searching far and wide for, for the best talent um, in order to, 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 to build the best company. Okay, so to summarize the, the funding journey, what is important to save up for you to leave off those savings from your full-time job before so you, you kind of can keep it going for yourself and for the company. Um, and then uh, try to put everything together, the website, the business cards, the idea, and try to find the right people through network and put yourself out there uh, to, to raise funds. And let's get to personal question. What does motivate you in life? Uh, what wakes you up in the morning? Maybe outside, we know that the mission of Betterman to make investments easier, it, it is motivating, but maybe something else, not on the surface. So I think where that, that mission for Betterment comes from for me is um, some of my studying happiness back in, in, in the day. You know, I mentioned uh -huh. uh, earlier that I studied psychology as well as economics and some of that psychology like leaning is like, what makes people happy, right? Like um, I, I'm lucky to have parents who, you know, were, have been so good to me um, and, uh, and have just said, you know, John, the most important thing is that like, you're happy and like, and like, you know, sort of like optimizing for that for, for me and my sister and, um, I, uh, I think about like happiness, you know, I believe that like we have, uh, 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 um, uh, it's, it's hard to, to seek happiness by pursuing happiness itself. Yeah. By, by pursuing some higher goal, like some, you know, um, some more aspirational purpose in life that that can lead to happiness. There's a number of factors. Exercise is important. Good relationships are important. But when it comes to like, what do you do with like most of your mental energy and like in your time, pursuing some purpose tends to lead to happiness. Um, and, uh, and so for me, building betterment, building a financial partner that Americans can trust, building a company that does things in a different way that makes meaning for people that helps them realize their dreams that to me is super motivating and it's motivating because it allows me to tell a story about myself to myself that like i'm doing stuff that like makes the world better like and it just feels like very clear the linkage and so i wake up happy um you know every day as, as a result of that and excited about about my work um and um i could probably do other things that would make me more money or, you know, um, they might have other more sh like short term, you know, um, benefits, but um, I, I feel like I'm a happy person and I, I feel like I attribute that to like our mission and, and the purpose that I get through through Betterment, a lot of it anyway. You're aligned with the with your purpose and what you what you do is aligned with your purpose. That's why that wakes you up. And how do you overcome adversity? Is it that alignment helps you or maybe something else? Oh, um, you know, meditation, I, I don't know, friends. <laughs> I feel like, like first I, I like, I think it's worth saying that I feel I've been um, privileged in so many ways in life, you know, in terms of like the time in which I was born, the country in which I was born, the family I was born into, the, you know, the resources that like I've been given along the way in terms of schooling and, you know, um, uh, the cities, you know, that I, that I ended up in, the friends that I, it's just like, like, I, I have to attribute a lot to that, to that privilege. And I have to give, I, I have a lot of gratitude for everyone who's helped me along the way. And I, and I recognize that most people don't have those, those sort of like privileges that I've had. And like, so my adversity um, is probably not as great as like the adversity that most people face 
Um, and, mm -hmm. and so I want to, um, you know, understand and, and appreciate that. Um, I um, would say the adversity that I have faced is, is nonetheless, you know, significant. Um, and part of it is like just, you know, being in an industry that um, doesn't tend to, you know, think a lot about like what are customer best interests. Um, and I had so mm -hmm. many people tell me, don't start a financial services company. Like it's a gross industry and like, you know, it's just, you know, like don't do it or like don't do it now in the financial crisis. Like this is the worst time to start that company. Um, and I guess I, uh, I feel like um, don't be afraid of adversity. Maybe it's easy mm -hmm. for you to say that again for like the reasons I went through, but like, like I like a challenge and like if people tell me, no, it can't be done. Like that's interesting to me. I want to understand why. And like, you know, uh, and, and maybe, maybe that's an opportunity, maybe because everyone's saying like, go that way. There's an opportunity in, in going this way. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, so don't be afraid of it, run at it, run at that adversity and just take it one step at a time, you know, like um, um, figure out, learn, like see where it, see where the opportunities are. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't need to overcome adversity. That's the opportunity right there that looks like adversity. And if you move closer and you take one step at a time, you'll get through it. And the last question is the life lesson that you learned that you want to share, the most valuable, the most helpful, maybe? I've learned a lot over the years. I'll share um, a story that's, that's maybe relevant to like why I... Um, some of my sense of like the importance of saving and of like, you know, the right financial behavior. Um, I had, you know, on the one side of my family, um, you know, um, I had grandparents who like ran a successful, you know, small like family business and, um, you know, uh, did, did that uh, in a community of, you know, like, and it just, like, that felt like a positive model to me. And on, on the other side of my family, I had like, like amazing grandparents who I spent, you know, a ton of time with growing up, very loving and like wonderful people. And yet like they weren't as like financially well set, you know, like they, like my, my grandfather was like, a, he was a, a book salesman and, you know, um, uh, um, my grandmother was like a community organizer and it's, um, they were fine, they were comfortable, but, um, uh, and, and, and happy, but, um, you know, money was tight and I, um, I remember um, when my uh, my grandfather, you know, bought a car when I was about 10 years old. Um, and I remember asking him about it. And, you know, he had he, he, he had got, gotten a loan in order to buy the car. And I remember saying, like, why did you do that? Like, why didn't you wait until like you could afford that car? Because I knew enough uh -huh. to know that, like, when you're paying a loan, like you're paying more than if you like paid cash. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and he said, Oh, wouldn't it be nice if everyone could just like, you know, wait until they can afford a thing in order to buy it. Um, and I got that. I mean, like, you know, like, um, I, I, it's not like I sort of like held that against him or, or anything like, um, but it also struck me as like a little bit like sad. And there was something of like, yeah, but like, if you just, you know, your car, your old car was fine, you know, like you could have like waited another couple of years and maybe like saved some money and like, maybe like, Maybe if you just like saved more, like for a long time, like, you know, like, like, like maybe you'd be in a better, better position now. Um, and I, I guess I, I've, I've long thought that like instant gratification is not um, the thing that makes us long-term happy. And so sort of avoiding those like impulse purchases um, and, and focusing instead on a plan and the, like the long-term and like taking the long view have been things that um, are, are an important part of my, my makeup from stories like that. And living according to your means. <laughs> and it's okay to get what you want just a bit later. Yeah, m money and, and things don't really lead to happiness, happiness. as much as it feels like they do. Um, but the sense of purpose and living according to your purpose does. Thank you so much. That was John Stein, founder and CEO of Betterment, uh, the platform that helps to make uh, investment decisions easier. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. <laughs> that was really fun.